Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to episode 86 of Direwolf20's Let's Play, Season 4. Wow, yeah, 86 already. Oh boy, cool. Alright, so uh, today's episode, I'm going to pick off where I left off last episode. Looks like Dire Pup has a little friend hanging out over here. He might have even killed a zombie for me. Good job, Dire Pup. How's your food bowl doing? Yeah, still plenty of food in there. He's doing fine, little guy. He hasn't even noticed me being gone. He's happy to see me though. Hey, Dire Pup. Maybe I should get him a few treats just to, you know, make sure he knows I still love him. I should have some treats in here somewhere. Let's see, where's my wrench? What do we got? Ah, oh, there we go. Some treats for Dire Pup. Oh, missing string. How about just one? Oi. There we go. Gotta take care of Dire Pup after all, don't I? There we go. Let's try that again. Get him about, I don't know, two or three treats. Cool. And then uh, right after this, I'm going to get back to uh, the, the build I was doing in my equivalent exchange world. Uh, where I want to start getting some uh, resources out of all those uh, flowers and bone meal that I'm working on here. So for now, let's just go take care of Dire Pup. Oh, getting dark out. Hey, buddy. There you go. Good Dire Pup. Have a good time. All right, back to equivalently exchanging things. Let's see. If I swing off in this direction, the next thing I'm going to need out of my alchemy system here, now let's see what do I got on me at the moment. I'm um, probably going to need a few more items, but I think I'm good for now. Oh, Dire Pup's coming with me. He's in follow mode, not wander mode. I'm going to go get him back in wander mode, and I will be back. So back in the age of alchemy now, the, uh, the, the fact of the matter is that this is a pretty easy change that I'm about to make here to get everything working properly, but let's get it going in place anyway, and then what I'll do is move on to the next build. So I'm going to grab out of here, let's see, I guess I never taught this thing an energy condenser, huh? So let's grab uh, some of you, and four of you, and uh, no obsidian for me? Uh, maybe target iron would be a better target for obsidian. Oh, wow. Definitely not. Maybe I never taught this thing obsidian. That's probably the problem. All right, I should have some somewhere. Let me go find some. All right, there we go. Take this guy, diamonds, and obsidian. There we go, energy condenser, and I might as well teach it to my transmutation table. Learned. Cool, energy condenser is now an option. So now anytime I want another energy condenser, it's just a matter of getting them with the MC. Let's run over to this guy. Now what's going to happen is all your seeds and stuff are going to come straight down here and make their way towards working on uh, bone meal for this condenser. And that's going to be cool. Let's get that running again. And as soon as we activate the lever, everything should start coming through the tubes awesome. Uh, now the option here is one of the following. We can we know that this thing is going to produce plenty of EMC for us. Um, probably more than we need. So we can either just immediately split this thing in half or wait for items to come through the tubes and uh, once this thing fills up with bone meal any excess items start getting turned into something better. Um, for now I think I'll probably want to go with uh, just splitting it in half and we'll see how well that works out for us. So let's get you out of here, and I'm going to open this guy up, and uh, probably just put in my Klein Star, and let's take a diamond out of here. Now that's a pretty uh, expensive item, but in terms of EMC value, it's definitely not one of the more expensive ones. Uh, we can put our energy condenser right here, and note now that what should happen is 50% of the items will go left, and 50% of the items should come towards me, because when the items reach an intersection like they are here, it's going to split them up half and half. All right, so we should start having a ton of items get collected in here. And if I just target a diamond, we should quickly start working our way towards some diamonds. Cool. Now, this thing is going to fill up rather quickly with diamonds, believe it or not. 
uh, once we really start going, especially once this thing fills up. Uh, you can see we've already got a huge surplus of bone meal going on. And uh, once that thing is full of bone meal, we're going to get even more items going into this chest, which will further increase the speed at which we're producing diamonds. Wah -ha -ha. We'll probably want to upgrade this thing to red matter at some point. But for now, we're in pretty good shape, and we've got all this cool, awesome... Uh, thing going on. The dark room is dark rooming and making us all kinds of stuff. And who's to say we couldn't have more than one dark room? Good question. We could even probably have more deployers here if we really wanted to with more bone meal. That could be fun too. Maybe I should expand this real quick and just make a few more deployers. That probably wouldn't be a bad idea. Just because, you know, I'm not getting quite as many items as I could. Let's get a few more pieces of wood and uh, I should be able to real quick craft a deployer. with a couple of chests and uh, a couple pieces of iron. There we go. So if we want to really just improve the uh, efficiency of this bone meal producing room, here's all we have to do. Let's say we want to go out uh, one, two, three, right here, and then one, two, three. That might not be a bad idea. Right there. Cool. All we got to do is place the uh, sonic here. Now these are totally optional upgrades, but it'll probably increase the speed at which this thing runs. Let's give it a shot. All I have to do now is connect pneumatic tubing up. And it should be redstone pneumatic tubing, not regular pneumatic tubing. There we go. Now what should happen here, let's see, looks like we're, uh, we did hit that butter zone. Remember I said if I set this thing to one bone meal at a time to pull out of here, that will, uh, you know, be pulling the perfect amount. So let's pull three bone meal at a time out. Okay, and what that should do now is pull three bone meal out at a time, and they should start going to the other uh, areas. Now I'm going to also, of course, fill this thing up like so. All right, so we just got to do that and that. And just to make this thing run just a little bit more efficiently, I'm going to grab maybe 11 of each. Now, because remember, like each tick, we're sending, you know, three bone meal down the line here, and we should uh, be doing pretty well. So, yeah, this thing should be pretty well um, proportioned so that we're sending the perfect amount of bone meal, right? We're pulling three out at a time and we've got three deployers that it's going into. So now we've just uh, probably seriously increased the EMC production potential of this system. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at all the items flowing through here now. Awesome, isn't it? It's a sight to behold for sure. If we really wanted to, we could expand it with some more deployers, but I think we've got a pretty good thing going here. And we've already made four diamonds. I haven't really done many cuts in the video at all. Just in the time that it took me to upgrade this system, we made four diamonds, and now we're producing them even faster. Look at the speed at which the EMC is flowing in here. And look at this thing. It can barely keep up with the amount of items coming into it. It's struggling too, that's for sure. As is this one. <laughs> that's kind of funny, actually. So we've almost overloaded these alchemical chests. So a dark room, definitely a solid way to do this. Now I need to warn you guys, and I hope you don't use this information to uh, do bad things, but I should warn you, uh, in, in uh, all honesty, don't do this on a server unless you really know what you're doing. Because if you do this on a server, you have a large potential to cause some serious lag issues, and it's bad, trust me. So uh, don't do that, please. So I just turned everything off, and we're going to let everything catch up a little bit. So we should have some bone meal um, production. Just let that catch up with the diamonds, up to six diamonds now. Uh, probably up to nine or ten by the time everything burns down. Sweet. 
So huge amount of diamond production, but of course diamond is not the end all be all. Let's start thinking about a way to get some more EMC production. And this guy, he's producing plenty of EMC too. We're already up to about a million here. Nice. We're gonna wanna work on something to make that um, pretty cool as well. Yep, we're gonna do uh, probably some kind of, uh, you know, powerful design here to get this thing as efficient as possible. I'm going to head to the overworld next and start planning a little something different to help out. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is go grab a wrench here and uh, steal a book. One book, please. Cool. And you can see I have a linking book on me. Where does that go? Good question. Let's head to our bum -ba -da -bum -bum -bum, Age of Alchemy. Cool. I want to craft the following items. Let's see, what do I got here in my inventory? I'm just going to do this, just to make things nice and easy. Uh, Philosopher's Stone. I always felt that crafting fences was a nuisance. So I'm not going to craft them anymore. Target block fence. Klein star. Yoink. A stack should be good. If I need more, I can get more out of my own personal Klein star that I carry around. Cool. I'm going to go build a fence out here. Let's see, where am I going to want to put this thing? Uh, maybe like right over here somewhere. That might be cool. Okay. No, that's not the right spot. I should probably get my... Whatchamacallit out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... Perfect. I'm going to stand right in the center of this and create my linking book. Ta-da! Linking book to the Age of Alchemy. Perfect. Exactly what I wanted to see. All right. Right over to here, please. Grab my portable hole and get back through here. To the overworld. Now, in the overworld, um, I'm going to go visit an age that I haven't been to in a while. dum da -de dum 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 Orange bag. I thought I had something in here that I wanted. There we go. Link book stands. Perfect. Just want to put this guy here temporarily. We've got the Mushroom Kingdom to go visit. Why am I visiting the Mushroom Kingdom? Good question. Let's go through. Now remember it's going to be a little bit laggy here, but that's not a big deal. I'll manage. What I'm going to do is grab myself a bunch of crystals. Remember I told you guys, crystals can teleport any and all entities. Awesome. So, let's get ourselves a few mushrooms. Hey guys, how's it going? Now this is going to be a pretty simple build for the most part. I just have to find a spot that I want to drop these guys into. And, uh, you know, we'll figure it out from there. Maybe like right here on this spot. Let's build this up. Maybe something like this. Eh, we'll get rid of this guy. And really, it doesn't matter how you build this out. It's, uh, you know, pretty much totally optional how you do it. I just want it to be kind of cool. That looks pretty good to me. Uh, and then here, I'm going to grab my crafting table and do the following. It's so weird how many frame rate problems I have in this age. Like, my whole game's lagging. It's craziness. Uh, all right, so there we go. Linking book to the Age of Alchemy. Cool. So now I've got a portal, right? And what's going to happen when I jump through this portal is I'm going to land. Saving chunks, traveling. Right here, inside the little pen that I created. Awesome. If you haven't figured out what I'm doing just yet, well, stay tuned because you're going to see in about a second. All right. Through to here. Let's go to our mushroom kingdom. Grab our portal gun, which I placed in my hand for a reason, and go steal some mushrooms. How's it going, guys? You're coming with me. Straight over and drop them into the portal. Poof. And uh, he should disappear. Look, there he went. Goodbye, mushroom. It was nice knowing you. You're coming with me, too. Oops. There we go. Pushed him in. 
Wahaha. Now in single player, you might notice just a small touch of lag when you push an uh, enemy through, or a friendly even, through the portal. Uh, that's because uh, single player, it's uh, it doesn't have both ages loaded at once. So technically what it's doing is kind of like opening up that age, writing the entity, and putting them back. So, uh, you know, we're kind of pausing the game for a split second as entities fall through. But when you do this on multiplayer, it's a little bit more smooth. I'm going to grab one more mushroom. And remember not to do this uh, in a chunk that has... Uh, logistics pipes in it. Uh, I found that out the hard way, is it can reset the chunk sometimes. All right, let's jump through ourselves. Whoosh. And we should find a bunch of mushrooms. Hey guys, hanging out in my pen. Nice. So the next thing to do, of course, is to start setting up a system that we can abuse these mushrooms. And how do I mean we're gonna abuse the mushrooms? Well, let's take a look. And I'll be right back once I'm ready. All right, guys, so the next component of this is going to require the crafting recipe you see in front of me, a bowl. Uh, they're worth six EMC each uh, because you use, you know, eight wooden planks times three is 24, and you get four bowls, so six EMC each makes perfect sense. If we come over here and visit our uh, mushrooms, the cool thing about a mushroom is all you got to do is right-click on him with a bowl, like so, yoink, and it'll uh, steal some mushroom stew for you, and that's worth 70 EMC. Pretty cool. And just keep clicking and you can get as much mushroom stew as you want. So that is a pretty simple way to, uh, you know, abuse that, you can say, and start creating a whole bunch of awesome stuff. And all you gotta do is uh, eat your stew if you want, if you're hungry. Or, what's probably a better approach rather than eating it, is converting it into a new item, uh, such as a diamond or something like that, using a similar system what we did last time with uh, the other stuff. So, let's get situated with a bunch of items we're gonna need to start playing with this a little bit. All right, guys, back in the overworld, ready to get myself a handful of pistons. Let's just get about, I don't know, 10 of them. Why not? Missing one crated redstone. Oh, my, I'm low on redstone again. All right, let's get about five of them. That'll work. Cool. Oh, yeah, look at that. Pretty much out of redstone. Probably from all the massive amounts of redstone I used in my last build. Better kick my quarry off at some point and let it mine for a little bit. Uh, but for now, I'm only going to need a handful of these pistons. I won't need all five. Probably just, I don't know, four close enough. Uh, we're also going to need some chests. I don't think I have chests in my system here, do I? Oh, I do. Look at that. Cool. Let's get five of them as well. That'll save me a little bit of time. And uh, how's my ender pouch of redstone doing? Oh yeah, look at that. We're like really out of redstone. That might become a problem pretty soon. Yeah, like right now. Oh well, equivalent exchange to the rescue. Ha, <laughs> exactly. I've got my transmutation tablet, and let's clean up my inventory real quick. There we go. Uh, simply borrow some redstone out of my client star. Uh, now, if you're sitting here looking at this saying, hey, where's the redstone? Well, remember, um, the more EMC you put over here on the left, the higher the value of the items are going to be. If you want to get redstone, the quickest way that I've found to do that is just to grab some eternalist fuel out of here and burn it. And that's going to lock your transmutation table into fuel mode, which will only show you the fuels available. And then you can grab all the redstone you need cool um i will just uh drop my timers on the ground for a quick moment and then go throw all the redstone yoink right into there uh now i do want to go check something real quick since i'm here and then i'll get back to this building of things i promise but since i'm here i do want to check to make sure that everything gets sorted properly um all the redstone should be going off in this direction and this thing should be doing its stuff you guys all going into there and behaving right uh, because I remember I upgraded uh, the carpenter tables when they uh, upgraded forestry. I just want to make sure everything's working properly. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah, it looks like it is. Plenty of redstone going in there. Not a big deal. You know, I could probably uh, change this thing out into a filter or something now, but... Oh, well. No biggie. Because I should be able to just grab a bunch of redstone and throw it directly in here now. Because now this thing has an inventory, so it's going to work a lot better. Look at that. Oh yeah, plenty of redstone. Cool. So now we don't have to worry about redstone for a little bit anymore. Let me into my house. Alright, we're going to craft some deployers, and the deployers are going to let us get a bunch of EMC from those cows. Woot. Um, probably should get the redstone that I need. Why aren't you supplying, by the way? Oh, there we go. It probably wasn't set to, uh, you know, limited the supply mode. That's okay. 
That'll be enough redstone for now. I'll be able to get more in a minute. All right, for real this time, crafting deployers. Which, of course, you've all seen plenty of, so... Cool. Uh, so that's enough deployers. I'm going to need some bowls. I'm going to need a couple other items. Hopefully I've got everything I need. Oh well. If I need anything more, I'll come back. So, to the Mushroom Kingdom? No, the Age of Alchemy. That's the right place to go. Here we go. Uh, now I need some more pneumatic tubes and redstone tubes, of course. And uh, what I'm probably going to want to do is get myself another one of those nifty little things. So let's grab from here. Put our Klein Star in and get out an energy condenser. Those guys are always fun and welcome. And we'll head over to my uh, pen here and let's give this thing a little shot. So I should be able to place the energy condenser right about, doesn't really matter where exactly. That looks like a good spot as any. And I know it's not centered. All right, I'll center it. Yeah, it was bothering me too. The uh, following is going to need to happen here. So let's give this a little bit of a test. And I should grab my uh, fences again. Let's uh, grab them. It's right around... I'm trying to remember exactly which uh, thing had fences on it. Yeah, we're going to want to do something like this. There they are, fences. Just going to need a handful. And this is me showing you guys the good way to figure out how to get items out of your equivalent exchange bench. All right, so let's get um, some cows dragged around. I'm probably going to want to actually enclose these guys in, like so. And then I can grab my portal gun. And of course, if you don't have portal gun installed, you're going to have to do this with wheat, which makes it a little bit trickier, but oh well. Now, can this guy stay in one spot? I guess he can, can't he? Let's move him a little bit. Come on, dude, out of the way. There we go. That should keep him well and protected in the right spot for me. Beautiful. I'll be right back. So now what we should be able to do is just mine this thing out and place a deployer right here such that it's facing the mushroom. Cool. Just need to get my sonic screwdriver and reorient it. There we go. Now he's going to want to try and get up on top of there, but we're going to try and prevent him from doing that by placing probably another fence post. There we go. That'll block him from getting out. Just remember that, especially if you don't have a uh, portal gun, it's not so easy to relocate them. There we go. Alright, so now anytime we supply this guy with a redstone signal, assuming that he has in his inventory the following, let's see. Uh, there we go, some bowls. Cool. And let's get our lever again to test with. Okay, so let's try it. Ta-da! We got some mushroom stew. Awesome. And every time this guy receives a redstone signal, he's going to make more mushroom stew. Beautiful. Now, I'm probably going to spend a few minutes uh, corralling these cows around. So I'll be back in just a minute. Hey, look at that. We have a nice little cow farm. Heh. <laughs> cool. Uh, just going to put some more of these fence posts up because I know I'm going to need them. And now we're ready to start really working on this thing. So the following items are going to be needed. Let's see. Probably going to need... Let's do this with a... Uh, we're going to need some filters and we're going to need some other cool things. Let's get to the overworld and start playing around. Uh, the first thing I want to do when I get here is check out how am I for red-doped wafers. Not nearly enough. And of course, the component for red-doped wafers is going to be, you guessed it, more redstone. Cool. So let's get this stuff going here. And we'll let these silicon wafers cook up. And while that's happening, I'm going to work on some deployers, uh, or some filters, I think. Uh, yeah, that's what I need, filters. So I'm uh, going to need some gold. 
And I'm going to need some iron as well for some of the resources that I want to make. So let's start crafting this up. I'm going to need four filters. Oh, right, and I need some more pistons too. Probably uh, a lot of them. How about I get the items I need, and then I'll be back. All right, so first things first. Let's craft up uh, four filters. And these guys are going to facilitate getting the, um, you know, uh, whatchamacallit stuff out, the uh, mushroom soup itself. So filters, four. That should be good. And then I'm going to come over here and see how my red doped wafer system's going. So far, it's going well. Uh, now, if I use a filter, I can craft a retriever and a sorting machine, but that's not what I want. I want the regulator. Dun, dun, dun. That guy requires an item detector, two buffers, and a bunch of other cool stuff, including brass ingots, which uh, I've got a few of. I've got plenty of. Cool. Uh, buffers, as you may or may not know, require iron bars, and I might have a few of those laying around, but it's easy enough to craft some more. Nope, nope, and yeah, a few. Cool. Uh, but I'm going to need, like, more regulators than that, so, yep, I'll be crafting them. And I'm also going to need an item detector, which requires some more red doped wafers. All right, let's get the four item detectors I'm going to need first. Uh, so the recipe for the item detector was as follows. Uh, I'm going to need some regular pneumatic tubes, some brass ingots. Oh, better make my uh, pressure plates first. Cool. Regular pneumatic tubes, not redstone. Big important difference there. There we go. Four item detectors, which are going to form the four components of my regulators. Neat. Uh, next up, going to need uh, some buffers, which I'm going to need a lot of wood for, and those uh, iron thingies. So let's get ourselves some more wood while we're here. Right out of the pouch. Okay. So we'll do this. All right, there we go. That should be all the buffers I need. Awesome. Cool. All right, so now the regulator. Let's put this thing on here and make sure we've got everything we need. Uh, these guys, some brass ingots, some of this stuff, and some wood. Cool. Regulators. Now we're talking. All right, I'm going to clean up my inventory, head to the overworld, or head to the Age of Alchemy, and be back. All right, and I'm back. So we've got uh, some deployers, some filters, some regulators. I might have gotten one extra deployer, but that's okay. Uh, that's right, I made one extra one earlier. Cool. So uh, probably at this point, want to silence these cows, but unfortunately, I don't think there's a good easy way to do that. And instead, I'll grab this thingy and just uh, start carving into the spot where I'm going to have my deployers be. And then I'm going to show you guys how the regulator works, because if I'm not wrong about this, I haven't gotten into the regulator yet this season. Have I? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know. But we're about to find out and figure out how the whole thing works. So uh, first off, let's get our mushroom stew out of here. Uh, put all that in here. Okay, and I'm going to, instead of, uh, let's see, how am I? Nope, hunger bar is empty. So this thing is going to go in here, and I'm going to craft up some more bowls. Yes, cows, I hear you. So, uh, four mushroom stew yields 46 bowls. Yeah, not kidding, right? Serious business. Um, so what we want to do is pretty much set it up so that the, mush the mushrooms here produce all the mushroom stew and send it directly into here. Very similar to the uh, bone meal system that I've got over here, just a little bit different. And uh, since I'm in this age, might as well turn this thing on and let it run uh, while I'm playing around. So we should see a bunch of stuff flowing through there. Awesome. You go, dark room. You go. Let's hook up our tubes. Now, uh, we're going to want regulators on these things. And what's a regulator do? Not a bad question. First off, you want to put your regulator on front of whatever inventory you want to regulate. Okay? And the regulator, you want the output hole, the smaller hole, to go adjacent to that inventory. So that's what I'm doing here. Cool. The um, next thing we do is run our pneumatic tubing, and I'm going to use our uh, redstone tubes, simply because uh, we want to, well, do I want to do that? No, probably not. Yeah, I don't think that's necessary. Hmm, let me think for a minute. All right, we're going to test this and figure out how well it works, but I'm going to grab myself just a handful of bowls here. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is probably need to move this back a little bit. Let's do that now. 
So come here, you. And yeah, cows, I hear you. You're mooing. I'm probably going to need the uh, one of my filters to go here, so I will need one more of those. And Oh, good, I brought some red doped wafers. Sweet. I didn't even mean to bring those, and uh, they're there. Perfect. Craft one of these up real quick. Another filter. I know I miscounted or forgot something. Nice. Uh, let's run our redstone tubes. Or do I want normal pneumatic tubes? Let's go normal ones for now, because this is going to be a test to see if this works the way it might, as far as I can tell. Okay. Now, the, fil the regulator, what we do here is we tell it what items we want to uh, pass into the inventory and how many at a time. So, for example, I'm going to say, accept one bowl at a time and try and keep, let's say, four in there. Okay? And what should happen now is, in the filter, I'm going to say four bowls at a time, please, out of this chest. I'm going to set up one of my timer systems, and I'm just going to place it right on um, the uh, filter for now. I might change it, we'll see. But for now, you go right there. Now watch what happens when I eject four bowls into this system. It should go find the nearest inventory. Cool. There it goes. And it's trying to place the bowls in there, but it only puts one at a time in. Okay. Note that that one little bowl is just going one at a time into the regulator, which is then going into the deployer. Okay? And now that it's got four bowls into the adjacent inventory, okay, we've got four bowls in here. It allowed one in at a time. This guy's got a redstone signal saying, hey, I'm full. I don't need any more bowls. I'm done. If I activate this thing again and let the timer pulse, Okay, it should go and allow one item in there, and that's going to go into the middle slot. You know what I did use regulators? I just remembered. I used them, um, I think, a little bit with my uh, quarry. Yep, the quarry with the uh, crystals. But anyway, that extra regulator is just going to, the middle slot here is going to hold like a little buffer inventory. But now the filter is backlogged. It can't let any more bowls out. They don't have anywhere to go. So uh, what I'm going to do next is grab just a few more of these things and say uh, keep four bowls in here, one at a time. And now, as soon as I did that, it's going to start taking the bowls from there and letting them in. Now, I wasn't sure if uh, this thing emitting a redstone signal would actually affect the deployer or not. I didn't think so, but that's okay. Uh, one, one, two, three, four. I had to figure out a way to get the deployer to go. It shouldn't be too hard, though. Cool. All right. So now, if I uh, you know, put my bowls in here and activate this thing, just let it run, and I'm going to let it run every one second. Some bowls should start bouncing all over the place, and then they'll, uh, you know, do their best to get into their respective inventories. And then they'll all fill up everything. So this guy's got room for a little bit more, maybe? There it goes. Yep, four. What's hitting me? Oh, a cactus. See you later, buddy. All right, so now all my regulators have enough bowls in them. And this thing's going to, you know, say, hey, I'm full. Don't worry about me. I got enough holes. Cool. Next up, we're going to figure out the filter system to pull items out of the deployer. Let's do that now. All right, next let's figure out how we're going to run some wiring or some tubing down here to get out the uh, filled uh, mushroom soup bowls. So I'm just going to clear out some space underneath this whole thing here, and uh, hopefully not too much. We should be all right. Just enough so that I can get around and mess around under here, and then we'll probably fill it back in in a minute. Oh my, look at that. We've already hit the wrapping up point, haven't we? Oh yeah. Well, we're going to have to wait till next episode to see how we finish up with this mushroom farm. But uh, if you noticed how much uh, EMC you gather from this little thing, you might have noticed we're going to be even more efficient with the mushroom farm than we are with, with this thing. I don't know about speed, but efficiency-wise, it should be pretty nice. Uh, and you can see, whoa, this thing is really filling up. we got 30 diamonds already, and we're totally overloading our uh, inventories here. Like, they're not even keeping up. Uh, which is pretty crazy, actually, if you think about it. So what I think I should do is just turn this thing off and let it uh, just take a few minutes to, uh, you know, consume all the stuff that it did. Wow, we can't even keep up. That's awesome. Maybe I'll have a uh, another alchemical chest condenser thingy over here. That might be cool. Let's do that real quick before I wrap up. Because it only takes a second. 
get in here. I didn't even have to go inside the house for this because I have a portable alchemical thingy, but whatever. Energy condenser. Let's roll. All right, I think I'm going to put this guy right there. Okay, and uh, just steal a diamond and have this guy targeting diamonds. And now we'll see if we start overloading the machines. So now it should evenly split in three directions, right? Uh, we should have uh, some of the stuff going here, some of the stuff going here, and some of the stuff going here, even split three. Uh, and hopefully that won't overload. I'm thinking it probably won't. Oh yeah, look at that. See, we're losing. We're subtracting from this thing, which means we're um, pulling in less, or we're pulling, yeah, pulling in less than we can produce. And how's it going over here too, right? This number's going down? Not bad, not bad. I mean, we'll have to give it a few minutes to let it balance out, but I think that should balance out our machine. Cool. I like it. All right, so this is Direwolf20 signing off on episode 86 of Direwolf20's Let's Play. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and of course, Take it easy.